Hey friends, this is Stack and Penny's Las Vegas edition. We had a really solid day. Just couldn't quite close the deal. We'll get into my seven cars day later on because we have Raja Karuth, ladies and gentlemen, coming in right here in the Nonsense Garage to chop it up about his journey, about his big dub this weekend. Also, we're going to get into the Ugga Dugga 5000. We're going to get into Bubba's uh, lug nut that would not come off. We're also going to talk about the five, cleaning house. Uh, so many storylines to talk to. Buckle up because this is Stacking Pennies. Stay tuned. Stacking them deep, selling them cheap. It tastes like gasoline, rubber, and victory. We're out here stacking pennies. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. We are here in the Nonsense Garage, ripping off some stacking pennies, and it's just not a normal band of characters. I'm joined by the normal band of characters. To my right, front tire changer, Ryan Blaney's Ford Mustang, Ryan Flores. Yo. And also, the big truck series winner, my teammate over at Spire Motorsports, Raja Kirby Karu, joins the studio. Hey. What's happening? Thanks y'all having me. Come on in, but hey, nice trophy. It's heavy. I accidentally dropped it. Coming it's out heavy the from car. the weight. Of, it's coming off your shoulders of everybody asking True. when you're going to win. It's cr- like, y'all don't understand, man. They is because, I mean, so many people help you get to get to a point, right? And, um, you know, you always get close, you get close, and it's like, is it going to happen? You know, and it's nice to just it do happened. it. It happened. When did it sink in? It still hasn't. Yeah. It still hasn't. Because you got out. And it was like you just got done with a with a with a practice interview. Well, like, those, yeah, our truck's pretty good. Yeah, like I I thought I like I thought about this obviously for years, right? You think about your uh-huh. first win, right? And you're like, oh, I'll be crying like a baby, and I was just like, huh, this is feels oddly calm. I got a feel. I got a, a theory about that. I think it's because you have visualized it, you've worked for it, so it's not like it's not a surprise. Yeah, it's not a surprise. Because not just because you're sitting here, you are one of the hardest working guys in the garage with your notes, with your sim time, with all that sort of stuff. Now it's all kind of came to fruition, and now you're starting to actually get trophies for the rewards, that, for all the, the amount of your work you're getting. But previously to that, with the unknown of the, the GMS closing shop, not really having a deal, you were – Not having one. Not having one. Not having not one, even period. Not really. Not having one. Yeah. Not many people know that, like, your deal over at our place wasn't done until legitimately 10 days before Daytona. Mm-hmm. Contract was docu-signed. In the month of February. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk about that off season. Just a lot of in limbo, a lot of hopes. Having this truck over our place. Is it mine? Is it not? Is it going to exactly. happen? Mm-hmm. So I think we'll backtrack to like last fall. And, you know, no one obviously wasn't going to, you know, GMS wasn't going to keep their truck program. And um, still having that relationship with Chevy, right? But I had a chance to go in a 38. And I... I kind of just said no just because I I trusted that there would be a place for me at Chevrolet, right? And and honestly, like, for a lot of time, like, man, I may have just screwed myself, you mm. know? And um, I'm glad I, I stayed faithful, you know, because, uh, I mean, all, although it came together really late, um, I mean, it's really because of, of Mr. H and Hendrick Cars and honestly the folks at Spire, Jeff, TJ, for, for betting on me, um, even though, like, not having the funding at first to run the whole year, they they wanted me in the thing, and so a lot of people pulled some strength to make I it happen. I don't know if TJ's ever told you this to your face, but him and I have talked about you multiple times, even before you were in the mix or conversation halfway through last year. He called you a, a blue chip guy. I don't know what that means. That's really good, right? Shaquille O'Neal uh, was a blue chip guy thanks. out of LSU. That like a five five tool guy. You've got the work ethic. You got the look. You've got all the things going for you. You got the talent. And he wanted to be putting a deal together with you. And just with your journey with Alpha Prime, with all these stuff, your, your, your NASCAR career kind of developed like within the last 16, 24 months, right? You, you yeah. get a couple partners, you go to this middle tier, bottom tier Xfinity deal, and uh, it was a struggle, right? Then you start, you could probably get in your head. So, what was the confidence level like? trying to go compete for yeah wins. it was hard because like i left the arca stuff like i lost the championship and and i was like i was leading laps i was running up front then changed crew chiefs in the middle of the year you know stuff going on behind the scenes and um i really was like i i didn't sell myself short thinking i was going to go and set the world on fire and that stuff because it it wasn't that it wasn't a cup affiliate team right um but it was hard because you go from like 
running up front of like, man, like a good day is to finish 20th if nobody crashes. A good day is to finish 17th or that's 15th, no you know? Yeah. And like waking up and going to the racetrack and knowing that's the reality was hard. Um, so I, I don't know. Like I just reminded myself of my why of like what driving, it? driving the car is fun. Right. And you know, all the other stuff is great. You know, all the, the fancy things, the things off the track, like that's fun. That's, that's important things to do, but the driving is the funnest thing. Even if your thing is driving terribly, like you're plowing the fence down or you can't get in the corner cause you're crashing. Like so many people would, would pay a lot and do a lot to be in that spot, you know? Yeah. And that's what, I mean, when everybody asks what the stack and pennies is about, right? That's what it's about. So Corey equates his career, much like what you just said, where it's like NASCAR 98. Right or like I don't know, it'd be like NASCAR oh five, dirt, no, dirt to Daytona. Well, he'd skip that with yeah. the, with a, uh, with I racing, <laughs> but it's like you start with an ARCA team, and then you get kind of a crappy Xfinity ride, more or less. Yeah, you weather the storm. You get you know a decent truck, and now you're in. You know, if you listen, if you can win Vegas, you can. You have a team that can win a championship. Yeah. That's how that's that's how Vegas is. So your focus has to shift to that. But it, like that's that's what the road is. So what are the biggest lessons you think you took away from? driving junk yeah and i mean it honestly it wasn't even junk most of the time like the alpha prime stuff was for not having motors not having like support you know from chevy like that stuff was pretty solid you know yeah it's not compared to cup of yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure for yeah. sure yeah i know that's why you're why you're saying that. i just want to make sure that for for th those listening like that's that's not yeah. what it is yeah. you know yeah, that's right. um but i learned so much in that stuff from how's this there we go there we go, there we go. from uh from stuff like pit road you know um like i i picked up a good amount of speeding penalties last year like dover like 40.08 miles per hour right but you can bet you i won't make that mistake in a truck so what one you to race or this weekend matters. right when it yeah. matters like I, I did that trying to get be the extra light faster running 20th at dover that's or, the pennies bro. you know 17th at vegas right and i i would yep. messed up our day right F finishing two or three four spots worse or worse than we we would have but yep. those lessons were so pivotal i even think about like my second my first big track racing experience car i wreck on the second lap you know and like that was such a big moment for me just to like Did all you right feel like your career was over i thought that was it dude yeah. i was like dude i it's over man <laughs> well, it's, dude it's but a lot a like, it. it's a, yeah. that's a lot like his career right there's a reason you guys did a deal together on fox yeah what a couple of years ago right? oh yeah yeah. it's it's pretty lateral to what Corey's was i mean his first daytona 500 the first pit stop Plowed about killed Clint Boyer. <laughs> ah! yeah. About run Clint Boyer over and then like go to Vegas, right? And you had a pretty big wreck at Vegas. Yeah. Like it was. You're it, just trying to get a little bit more. And that's that's where that came from, right? So that's exactly the progression you've been on. But I, but we talk about it at length because we're short track guys. But like it's hard unless you grow up in a vicinity of a short track or healthy short track program or you move to North Carolina to race like to be a race car driver. But you have like i know william byron was a i racing guy but you have like taken that to the next level because you didn't even get behind a real the wheel of a real race car to your 17 yeah so that was what, four or five years ago mm -hmm. yeah really improbable story how does it feel i mean i know you feel like you have a ton left to do in the sport right you're just starting but it's got to feel pretty cool cool to just see how you are this week even right it's just a relief honestly because you yeah. i mean i've i've you dream about it since you're like this tall mm -hmm. and you always wonder like, Oh, am I going to be able to even get to this point? Like, what is it going to feel like? You know? And then you get your foot in the door and it's like, Oh, this is way harder than I thought it would be. And then the success doesn't happen immediately. Then you're just like, man, like I've wanted, I've dreamt of this. Am I even meant to do this? You know? So, um, it just, it's just a sense of relief, right? Like, like Grant asked me this morning, how's it feel? It's just like, like a sigh of relief, you know, like, playoff spot but it yep. above above all like i put it together so do you feel it. like there's extra pressure you're, you're the third black driver to win in the top three series is that a whole nother level of expectation yes right? and no tell me for sure it. because it's like it's not like it's a part of me right and i and i i honor it i cherish it and it's a part of my personality is how i grew up you know at the same time that also is not just you know it's not a character trait to an extent like and so that's like it is a little pr i don't want to say pressure right because the ultimate pressure is to perform that's right and do the best that you can and do the things during the week to be the best race car driver on, on fridays and saturdays 
Um, but honestly, I think about that all the time because I know the amount of people that are watching me. I know if I do good, the press that's going to happen. I know when I don't do good, the stuff that's going to be talked about. So I think about that all the time. And honestly, I take that as like a feather in my cap sometimes because it's like, man, like if I do good, like I can really help the sport. And yeah. I honestly, you I can. love that because it's like, I mean, I grew up playing basketball. I grew up running track, like that stuff where people look like me, like that's, you don't think twice about it. Right. But I know like if I can do good in NASCAR, like I can help the sport like so much because the people that I grew up with and like a lot of my friends and in that world, like this is a completely different industry for them. So I know I can just help a lot. Yeah. That's a, I mean, that's a big deal going back to the iRacing stuff is like, like a Kobe Bryant, right? A kid from Philly can go to the basketball court and practice. If you want to play baseball, you can go to the baseball field and practice. If you want to race, you couldn't do that in the past. Right. So that, that's like, that's a whole nother level to to who you are as a person not just being you know a black driver but coming from i racing opening more doors for other people to be able to do that a kid that doesn't you know that lives in inner city or doesn't lives yeah. out in a country not close to a racetrack they can become a race car driver because of the work they put in on that but like okay so you've gotten your first win now the goal is not just to win races it's to be a champion so you let it sink in now you're locked in the playoffs when's the focus turn to building points and win the championship i mean we i mean it starts right today i mean we we show up in the mornings we have our post-race stuff and we just go from there business as usual um for me my focus lies on the tracks that i didn't do good at last year i think about richmond i think about martinsville um i think about code a little bit just i know my strengths you know bristol the mile and a half darlington um the concrete places like i know that's kind of i gotta hang out at that at that stuff but I got to work on my short track stuff. So that's kind of where my focus is. Um, Cause I, I know the stuff I'm going to be in is fast. It, it should be fast almost every week. So I have to step up to the plate where I know, like, like KB said in the comment meeting last week is like, you fix you. Then you tell the, you know, the guys how to make this truck better, but you fix you. So that was like a, a holy cow moment for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's right. So you, you mentioned Kyle Bush in the comment meeting last week, but there was, there was others. There's also a, a clip, post a tone of bubble grabbing you right there that got a little bit of traction yeah. right wrong or indifferent uh svg sat in this chair last week and we talked about just some guys who have helped mentor him right because right now everybody's got something to say this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do but who are those one who are those couple guys that like okay their opinion really matters and this is what i'm going to apply to my career going forward i mean i think about you i think about ross uh bubba because, I mean, y'all have been there since I was racing ARCA and late models. And like, I remember you sending me your k notes from when I was going to Dover for the first time and Phoenix and stuff like that. So it's it's that's a really good point because, you know, a lot of people want to help, right? But sometimes it's too much information because, like, they're not necessarily paying attention to what you have going on. Not saying, like, that's a bad thing, but they're just not kind of plugged in into yeah. the stuff that's going on in, in your world. So um, it's been helpful for a lot of you guys that, Obviously, you're not looking at every race at every single moment, right? But you have a sense of what's going on and where we're at. Because um, I know that it's the same for same for Nick, same for Taylor. You know, look at, at Zillage or, or Katie and a lot of the other uh, Chevy guys and um, guys and gals, I should say. Is there so. is there a little bit deeper of a bond, though, between you and Bubba knowing that you're up against kind of the same headwinds in the sport? Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of the conversations we have, it's like, it's cool because it's like ah you you get it you know yeah. and so that that's really nice and and obviously we do a lot of things together uh for nascar whether yeah. it be conferences and things of that sort which i mean i never mind right it's cool to talk about the sport um but it's nice it's just like you get it so that's exciting man i'm pumped i'm super pumped for you i'm, I'm glad he's doing it at our place what, too i guess i got a question what being in dc grind you might have talked talked about this at length but i don't know I've never heard you talk about it. what made you decide on being a race car driver. So, so I was born in Atlanta, but I, I went to I went to school in DC. So I, I'd say I grew up there. But so I watched the Cars movie, obviously. But my dad, are he, you a product would, of Lightning McQueen? Right I'm now? a product of Lightning McQueen. Let's go. The Cruz Ramirez he's, story he's more, in real life. No, you're more of a Jackson Storm, bro. Not even Cruz Ramirez. Okay. Cru yeah. Yeah. Little diversity angle yeah, coming uh -huh. in. A little okay. bit. A little bit underdogish. Underdogish, exactly. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the Cars franchise, um, my dad would travel for work. You know, he did a lot of stuff in the music and sports industry. So he would get die cast sometimes. And I mean, that was it. I figured out how to like watch the NR2003 videos on YouTube or the stop motions on YouTube and stuff when I was seven, 
eight, ten years old. Um, and then that's kind of where it started for real. Mm. Love what that. do you What do you think, twenty one year old Raja is telling thirteen year old Raja right now? Nothing. No. Nothing at all. Not even nothing talking to him. You're not going to cry when you win your first race. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying nothing to him. No, letting him learn. No. Yeah. You got to got to learn it because it it made me to who I am today. Yeah. So. Dude, I'll say that you have been the biggest sponge in the garage. I think everybody would agree with that, right? Yeah. You ask questions like sometimes too much because then I just like. Well, it's know. it's tough. That's, like that's you talk about like. But when you're a student of the sport, you just take a little bit from everybody, right? Like if you go to a hickory and watch a street stock race or something, you could take from one of them guys. Or you go, you know, you go to a cup race or stuff and take, and you're just taking little bits. It is weird though when you ask a lot of questions because then you'll ask somebody a question that, and they'll give you their answer, but it doesn't quite work for you. And then they get yeah. pissed off that you don't listen to them. Yeah. You're like, ah, no, it didn't really work for me. But it's obviously worked out for you because your trajectory has been steep. Yeah. What do you think that trajectory looks like this season? And then five years from now, where you want to be? I don't think it would be fair to look five years, to be honest. Yeah, but I think internally. But, but you gotta know where you you gotta know where you're going. Right, right. obviously, like to to be racing on Sundays, right? That that's yep. the goal. But I can't get there if I don't put together a full season in this stuff, right? So that's so what's where that my, look like week to week now. I mean, just doing the same things and adjusting minor things. I think it's also a good reason, good feeling to start the season this well because. Like y'all know, you do so much work over the winter, and it's so easy to just have a gut punch. Like you get to Daytona, and like, like I think about cars and get wiped out six laps in the race or Harrison, you know, and like, and then Atlanta, like lap wreck on the second lap of the race, you know. So yeah. it's um, I think for me, it's just adjusting little things. Like I said, putting a little bit more emphasis at you know Coda, Richmond, Martinsville, uh, Gateway, you know, places that I didn't think I was that strong last year, and um, just not and then not letting my guard down for the places that I know I've got a good you know handle on too I think is important that's such a great point because I'm sure you get that it sounds like you get that question a lot but yeah you're in the fire right now right so if you don't if you try to focus on five years from now you need to be focusing on the next Next five weeks weeks, you know like that that and that the next five weeks and the next you know like like we talked about how you win this championship because if you win this championship it sets you sets you up for the next five years yeah that yeah that's yeah that's great point last year I, I didn't do i was too focused on like the next thing like mm-hmm. oh like yeah. i need like yeah what's the next deal like what's oh am i gonna try to get the nine or you know where i need to be here and i just i yeah. think that just kind of diverted where my focus too needed noisy. to be yeah too noisy gotta get rid of that noise, yeah. bro. yeah and you if you don't take care of what's right in front of you you know what's exactly what's There's down no the road you're yeah, never you're gonna get, get there. there yeah exactly yep well I, I know you gotta head up the road to uh to our place the for, a post, mm-hmm. for a post race caught me but first time on the show you don't get to leave that easy your second time on the show second time second first time. time is a dub winner though mm-hmm. let's go uh so three questions mm-hmm. we're gonna add a fourth i believe you answered but if you had one race car and one race track the rest you of your remember life, my answer no it was the 2009 cot at homestead mm. cot is a left field answer for sure mm-hmm. i was lo- 2009 is that the wing with oh, the yeah. wing oh, with the wing Just i grew absolute. up on that um most embarrassing moment the racetrack Ooh, man i got a couple um let's talk about the one this weekend though you said you didn't even try to go in the grass oh my gosh dude so basically i tried to do like the logano burnout that he used to do just sling it just sling it yeah and i i i think i just didn't match it right with like my shifting and stuff i'm like oh no 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 as soon as i got in the grass i just like lifted and pushed the clutch in until i'm like uh, this is like a just a truck race. Like, let me not destroy the grass. Oh, you did some yard work for yeah. Did they tell you Jimmy in the maintenance cabin? Was nobody, really nobody off. talked to they, me. They but don't I was, tell you like in the drivers meeting, like, hey, no, stay off the grass. It's a little bit. Of we're gonna see that. Thing. We're gonna see that in the next email before. Uh, or the next place we have grass. Texas. They told Corey that once at Bowman Gray Stadium. Oh, uh, the first thing I did was yank a left into. Yeah, ripped the nose yeah. off. He ripped oh the nose God. off. My the dad car. was more pissed off about me ripping the nose off than he was winning the race. Yeah. Question number three, what is your first racing memory? Um, I think about – so there's my first race I went to at 12, Nationwide Race at Richmond. You may have been in that race in the 98, maybe, in 14. Maybe. No, um, not Richmond. Not Richmond. No. Um, I remember watching the 2009 Carfax. Two, it was the Nationwide Race that Brad won against Vickers and KB. Um, that's probably my earliest – 
racing did, memory. Did somebody just t- did somebody tell me you dropped this? I trophy? dropped it coming out of the rental car. It was not my fault. Oh no! It was not my fault. So basically, <laughs> it was we had to park our rental cars at like a different yeah. place. So like my door, like I went to move it, and the door swung open because it like how windy it was. Oh my gosh! So and windy. then it was so windy, and then <laughs> down it came. I was like, ah, uh, <laughs> gravity, gravity. <laughs> Yeah, you got a little something, something right here. I'm just glad my toe was under because this this thing's pretty heavy. I'll, I'll save I'll save a story. I dropped a sway bar on my toe at South Boston for a later. Oh, day. bro, just, like the like not the not the arm. I'm talking the, a the two whole and bar. a half inch, the heavy inch and three quarter bar right right on my toe. Right, just took a drill the, bit right before qualifying and drilled the nail so it let it leak out. It freaking hurt, bro. Last question. We're gonna add this one for this. Show. All right. In what ways do you stack pennies? By showing up every day when it's hard. Because, like, mm. it's a lot of times where, I mean, I start my days every day going to Josh's at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning-ish. And um, there's a lot of days where I'm like, man, I don't want to get up. But just going and just, even if I don't feel great, just giving all I got that day. Um, but also, like, not doing too much. Because I think it's, it's very easy to, like, just, like, try to go and burn yourself out. But, like, if you're feeling like, oh, I'm only 70% today, well, just do your best at your 70%. So yeah. just showing up and that's it as not i said this a couple of times like it's, it's nothing special about me it's just i just care a lot and try the that's difference it. between the good ones and the great ones is that very is much, buddy. yeah that's but i mean that is special yeah right? knowing it doing it doing it's hard part man and you're doing it one week at a time congratulations on your first career truck win many more to come thanks for joining us in the studio thank Roger you Cruz. appreciate you gentlemen thank you invite us to the banquet if you win the championship it'll be pretty fun, we're calling bro. it here all right. <laughs> <laughs> that 71 truck's going to be a force this year, ladies and gentlemen. More stacking pennies coming up right after this. Ever since I've driven the Chili's car dates on it, everybody's asking me, what is your Chili's flavor? All right, guys, listen up, because I have the all-time, the official Corey LaJoy Chili's food list. And it's going to start with some chicken fajitas. It's also going to go with some chicken crispers with ranch. We're going to go, I don't know, the old timer probably is going to fit somewhere there. The Southwestern egg rolls, as long as they come with ranch. Now, that's not all. Because then you have the chips and salsa. You have to eat not one, not two, but three baskets of chips, probably the skillet, probably also with some ranch. Just keep the ranch coming and right on down to Chili's. And we're back. We kicked Raja out of studio. We are back, and we're going to break down all things Vegas. But first off, what a stud that guy is. You can tell he's got good people around him. Dude, I'll tell you what. I said it to him. I'll say it here. If you win Vegas, you are an odds-on favorite for the championship. And some of the answers he gave there shows a lot of maturity, and I think that that he can can win this championship this year. I know it's early, but it wouldn't surprise me. It's a hot take. I don't think so. I think so. Okay. I mean, it's a fairly warm take. I bet you a penny. I got plenty of those because I had about 15 people Venmo me pennies this week. So I appreciate all the good people who are listening and venmo me enough to probably buy not even a pack of gum, but nonetheless, appreciate that. Keep a tally on all of the pennies you get this year, and then at the end of the year, if Raja wins the championship, I'll bet you that much. All right, that's a deal. Okay, cool. I'll shake on that. And I hope I hope to be giving you all the pennies I got. Damn right. Because I would love to see that 71 truck with Chad Walters and Raja at Spire Motorsports get that big trophy. But... Nonetheless, uh, this week was a, like you mentioned, a great gauge on the strength of your team. Vegas is the the barometer of how much downforce you make in uh, terms of drag, in terms of efficiency, horsepower, and mechanical grip. Like, Vegas is the true test of where you stack up. We went to Daytona, went to Atlanta. Those guys are animals of our own, but Vegas is a true telltale of how you stack up. Yeah. And we unloaded with some speed, uh, top 15 speed with the 77. And, and myself uh, was super pumped up to see that. Barely missed out a second round qualifying. It's close. Uh, I mean, you can be four or five hundredths off. You were right there. Dude, qualifying, watching it was electric. I watched was it in it? my hotel room by myself, and I was like into it because it had the ghost ca- the ghost Bro, car. and it then like full commit, too. Well, it, what's cool is like you can watch you guys. Who gets up to speed good? And then you guys would kind of run the middle of one and two. So who would get through there good? And then it was like everybody was pretty close. 
and there'd be guys ahead at the end of the backstretch that would just blow turn three. Yeah. And it was like so technical to get through turn three, right? And With also was, a 45 mile an hour wind. Gust. Yeah, because you could tell like who who didn't get in there, who got shoved in there by the wind, or who. Like, the most interesting part to me was like Logano. He's like, I don't think I'm going to make it, but I know what I could have done better. And they kept kind of going back to him and showing him because everybody was really close to knocking him out. So they mm-hmm. kept kind of look like showing him. So then when he made the final round, you could tell him be like, okay, I know what I got to do now. And to watch him make that adjustment and get the pole was like, champ. but it was just like really cool when you to see that at a high, that was like high level NASCAR stuff. Well, also the parody, right? You can qualify, look at Noah Grax and qualified 30th and ran sixth. Yeah. I mean, the guys that qualified in the thirties can still have a chance uh, to execute the day and be there at the end. But uh, we were there early, started uh, 17th, drove to about 14th, took two, restarted fourth behind old uh, Denny Hamlin, two podcasters on the outside lane leading the field, uh, and we both got a pretty good jump. He was on rights as well, uh, and this worked out for us. Uh, you never really know what to expect when you take when you take two, uh, but the hang-on pace of our car was really good. We're a little bit tight when that clean air. I can tell you this. Racing in those first three or four rows is a completely different race than what it is in the free. It, so you're not six wide for 19th. Uh, a lot more give and take. Look at you. Were you nervous sitting on the front row there? No. Well, you weren't. Like, you were on the front row because, like, the splash zone with the two orca whales in front of you. Well, there was there's a lot of work. I feel like I was in SeaWorld with the uh, with the A lot of Toyotas. A lot of Yotas, especially off of four when I uh, – did a little bit of a self clear up in front of the 19. I had a mirror full of an orca whale. Ooh. Um, so I think in that moment, you know, you want to try to get the cleanest air you can, especially you know you're at a tire disadvantage. As we see here on YouTube, you can see the 19's in car camera and just closing the door on that USONIC Camaro with a mirror full of the orca whale. I kept uh, thinking, speaking of that, I kept thinking when I saw your car, there was, did you have a Shark Week car once? Uh, I wish. There was a Shark Week car, and that's what it looked like. So I kept thinking that you were sponsored by Shark Week. Yeah. But we were able to hang on. We got a caution maybe 15 laps later. Then everybody came back down, put four on it, and we equalized. And we ran legitimately in the top five for the entire first stage. Um, so that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, made me super confident with uh, just our processes and what we're bringing to, uh, to the racetrack. Because like I said, that's a true test. Where'd you finish in the first stage? Seventh. Okay, because the first stage was like super long. Yeah. Because I Blaney Eight, even came over and he laps. was like, well, no. He was like, that was the longest 27 laps or 32 laps I've ever run. Because we did two pit stops in the first 32 laps. Yeah. And I was like, man, like, we could run out of our tire allotment here because I think yeah. we only had seven sets. Um, yeah, we put scuffs on at one point. Uh, and I was just like, man, this, is, th- this race historically just runs green. Yeah. But did you, because we were... We were like 15th at one point, and then we ended up passing you right before the end of a stage, or we were right behind you at the that end one. of the stage. Because you came out after that stage. You guys had a good pit stop. Came out fourth. Came out fourth. Came in where? Seventh. Six, seventh. Yeah. And maintained there. Yeah. Um, all was, the way up until the green flag stop, we lost maybe five or six under green. Five or six up spots. Yeah. Something happened. Uh, we had a d- double pump on the old jack. Uh, um, we've got that pit stop. As well, if like, we wanted uh, to fire that up, like uh, you had to jack it back, jack up. it back up to for the right rear. Ah, uh, you know, and and I wasn't didn't think it was going to be too detrimental. Under green, it's pretty spread out. Uh, my guys had a couple heaters on the day; they were really good. Oh, and the right rear is not tight. Jack it back up, jack it back up. Under green, um, Ooh. I think that was a probably a twelve second stop. So you give up five seconds on track. Several cars in between us, and that's. Real, really and truly, that was kind of when the day got started to get a little bit away from us because our balance was a little bit tight, and the further you get from cleaner air, the tighter our stuff got, and we just couldn't quite get on the other side of it. So we we were on the fringe of the top ten. We we I think we finished eleventh in stage two, which is still for us like hell yeah, we're having a day here. Um, but then you get in the hornet's nest. We maybe lost a couple more under under caution. Come out fourteenth, fifteenth, and. Uh, racing with 77 first time we raced side by side all year got a little he got a little aggressive on the bottom of us and plugged us in the fence uh, oh Hokemar he got your teammate yeah he Put he stuck us in the fence we bent a toe link and then we were going backwards and then kind of set up the downturn of our day 
So we're hanging on. I'm a little bit loose and playing a little bit of defense here with the six, just trying to get it home. We, we probably had 20 to go. Um, saw him coming. I was already free and peeled it off the wall, already on the verge of left right rear grip, and just that change of pressure from that six car packing it in there uh, and removing some downforce off that left side spoiler uh, was enough to lose traction. Just from that closing rate? Just the closing rate. And I was a little just, bit loose, It's just right? like pushing. So that's like the bubble we talk about at Super Speedways. It just kind of pushed the bubble to yeah. you and spun you out. Damn. Yeah, it just took, took a little. Like, I was already on the verge of slipping, right? I was already a little bit loose, and all it took was just that <laughs> that kind of the bubble burst to the left mm. rear. Uh, Back to it in, actually, was like I hit. I was like, oh, damn, that kind of hurt. Kevin Harvick. Um, like I, I watched the extended highlights last night. He's like, "Oh, that was a that was a pretty tough hit." And then when I, you hit the apron, it was one of those like you're sliding so long, and I'm like Wah. wide open, trying to keep it off the fence. Like, Wah. and I'm looking out the right side window. And I'm looking at the left side. Like, I think I'm good. And as soon as I was like, "Good for pow!" Oof. Damn it. it! Then, well, then you're sliding down the track with everybody coming at you. And oh, then yeah. Harvick, Harvick mentioned, he said, "You don't understand how right hard that hit on the apron pow. is." He's like, "That hit on the apron is brutal." Well, yeah, because it's just straight. Z right through your back, right through your backbone. Luckily, I had a Are good you sore today. Pretty sore, really My back sore, because you don't realize how kind of slumped over you are in the seat, especially after 200 miles. Your posture is kind of like sunken, right? Because you keep like tightening your belts every pit stop. So over the course of the race, your your posture is just getting worse and worse. Right? You don't realize how much you're kind of hunched because you're just kind of comfortable and sunk in. And then when you back it in the fence, and it just like you don't realize how quick it straightens your posture. I'm like, oh my goodness. That freaking hurts. Do you bad. put any blame on Brad there or no? No, he was doing what he he was doing what he's supposed to do. Now, if I just run lane two and don't try to get to the bottom, I was trying to shut the bottom off, but I didn't anticipate him getting Arrow there. block, if you will. Arrow block, if you will. Uh, I thought that was a pretty interesting comment from Ross. Did you see what Ross had to say about Blaney? Yeah, I guess I saw like he was mad that he arrow blocked him. No, he just said he's he's proud of him to see how much how far he's come in terms of learning how to arrow block. <laughs> yeah, I was like, listen, oh, I'm sure. Good. Look, error, error blocking is one of them things that it's frustrating when it's happening to you, but it's but you got to do it. It's good when you're doing it to somebody else, right? It's necessary like, evil. Yeah, I don't. But hey, you got to do it. Why, you can't just let the guy get to you. Like, I mean, if you got the option to shut shut the lane off, you shut it off. Or maybe, maybe since what he did to Blaney at Phoenix when he was trying to win a championship, maybe Blaney's going to do it back to him all the time. For right? sure, you race ex people how exactly you're going to be raced. Yeah, so. it's just the way it, the way it's been. It's always the way it's going. Gumby. Yeah. That's what it is. I don't know. I, I'll tell you what. Or if they get too close, you just throw a tr trash bag out of your, your window. Bro. <laughs> Some, so. I can't even begin to I can't even begin to tell you guys how freaking windy it was. I, I know well, we're talking about it a lot. I've seen trash, but I've never seen a full trash bag. And Rudy Frugal went on record on Sirius XM saying that there was still a beer can in that trash bag when they took it off. So they pull in. Cordero ripped it off. And then, like, you know somebody in the. Like we were watching that live because we were in the next pit stall from them, and I was like, "Damn, dude, that's a full, freaking trash bag." Gallon trash Somebody bag. in the parking in the infield cam lot was like, "Oh, damn, our trash bag's gone." I only had one bush light can in that thing too. Yeah, they needed it. If they had a little bit more, they probably wouldn't have blown away. But dude, I, you cannot talk about how bad the wind was. I mean, we almost didn't even land on Saturday. We had to go around, and then the, all the planes that left later than us. Had got stuck in Tulsa for four or five hours waiting for the wind to die down. So it was like, Ugh. yeah, they said that we might have to land in Bullshead and drive drive to Vegas because that's how bad it was. Dude, I've never seen more wind in my life. No, I mean, it, people talked about during qualifying it was so windy that it was even blowing stuff onto the track like dirt and dust. And that so much you didn't want to be on one of the first ones. And it's tough, man. It, but it, it actually on the racetrack, everybody's like, oh, does it push the car drop? Not really. Really? No. I mean, you felt a little bit of tailwind down the back. And you felt a headwind down the front in just terms of RPM, just a little bit of, like, resistance. Uh, but you would think that it kind of would move the car around, but it wasn't super noticeable. That's a hot take because I heard other drivers say that um, that it does move the car around a lot. So maybe they're being dramatic or maybe you're just playing it cool. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I know but what I do know is I was happy with the pace of our car because you don't really know what to expect. You, you don't know if your simulation translates to reality, and it does. So if we can keep bringing some hot rods like that to the racetrack, uh, I'm gonna be pretty pumped up about that because I think we like we were legitimately a top ten car. Yeah, um, all day. You all and day. the 77. Yep. Right. High tide raises all ships. So both of you guys are contenders now. And but Cliff had that five car dialed in. Yeah, I mean, 
you got the best driver, best team. He gets around Vegas with his eyes closed. Um, what, swept the week, swept the day, swept the day, just barely. I think he just barely inched out Tyler on one of the stages, dude. Reddick, I'm telling you, if anybody's gonna have a breakout season and win five, seven races that you don't think it's Tyler Reddick, and yep. he. Dude, he was ripping the top. He just made, like, one mistake in lane choice at the end of the race. He was running the top, and he got to Larson, and Larson, like, did, like, an arrow block on him, and then they went down the three, coming to the white, mm. and he ran the bottom behind him and just lost it. Mm. Where if he would have ripped the top again, I mean, dude, you well, think... At that point in time, Larson's just driving straight out of his mirror. Yeah, but you put him in a position where he's got to choose, yeah. right? I, I don't know why Tyler committed to the bottom. I don't because he, he thought it was the best, but it wasn't. Because he, dude, him running the top the way he was was. There's no. I think he does it better than Kyle Larson. Oh, I think like when Tyler Reddick hits the top right, he is he he's the only one that can rival that. Yeah, dude, and he he'll like blow it off too. Like everybody else is three foot off the fence, oh, he yeah. is on the board. It's like I remember dirt that. and stuff freaking blowing everywhere during COVID when we first came back. They'd be like, everybody's on the bottom eight car because when he was driving the eight eight cars. Only one against the fence. Yeah, running two seconds faster than everybody else at Darlington. Uh, I, I don't disagree with that take. Uh, Tyler Reddick might be the best at running the fence. They had the spoiler cam, and it was sick because it was like behind the spoiler, looking at the at the C post, and had like the Jumpman logo on it, like right. I mean, inches off the fence, and the, the scary part, and you you can attest to this, that the scary thing from like to watch is that you're against the fence. And then your car comes away from it off of four, and then you get, like, it yeah. flattens out again, so it looks really challenging. Yeah, the radius of the wall in three and four isn't consistent. Like, that last little bit, it's tempting to go out there, but then that thing comes way back in, probably what seems like four or five feet. So, yeah, you got to pull it off the wall like the three-quarter marker. It'll just suck. It sounded like it was really hard to build runs. That's what that's what Ryan was saying. All He's like, I can't run the top any harder, and I can't build a run. Yeah, it's the I think it was the tire. The tire was – a different right side it had a little more quote unquote durability uh didn't lay down quite as much and it didn't didn't really fall off a whole lot you saw a lot of guys on two maintain especially the one towards the end of the day after a after a speeding penalty make his way back take two and was able to fight for that p4 finish well other than the tires there was people that laid down some stops on pit road and some people that fell off as well so yeah I mean, it takes it's a full team effort. Like you said, if your team is successful and it can find its way towards the front at Vegas, that's a pretty good barometer of how you stack up. So, how do you how do you like the 12 chances? P- ended up P3, solid day. I liked our day. Yeah, it was a, I mean, that's how you win championships that day. I mean, we weren't the fastest team on pit road. We weren't the slowest team on pit road. We were there when it counted and kept them in the race all day. That's what, I mean, that, that, that was a blue collar day for us. We weren't going to win, but we maximized our day. Yeah. So. There was a couple people that did not. Let's go talk about them. In pit road boats and woes coming up right after this. And we're back with some pit rows and several woes for some potentially race winning cars in Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace. So let's check the tape. What happened to the eight? So the eight car come in, dude, Vegas, the slickest pit boxes we go to them. Mm. I, I think they're one of the slickest. They're they're kind of like, they don't look it in length, but they're tighter, like they're wide and tight. And you, anytime we would go to the West Coast swing here, Phoenix is a little bit better now since they did re-pit road. But um, California was this way. You would just slide through the pit box. So... He got in a little hot. He slid long. But whose job is it to say, hey, 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 yo, we are on the line? Every team has a guy. You know, it's different. Everybody's coached up differently. That one's really close, but it's still. Horseshoes it, and it, hand grenades, right, man. So if we, if we watch the tape, there's a black line and a white line. Yep. The black line is only there so you can see the white line because it's a concrete pit box. Right. So it's the white line. Mm. If you're on that line, I think it's a one-lap penalty. I don't know if it's passed through, but it's a no-no to touch your car. A lot of times if you touch it and you back up, they'll kind of let you have it because you took the penalty of backing the car up. Yep. But you cannot service your vehicle on like the they are on the line there. Every team's different. The guy who catches the front tire is usually the one that's furthest to the front of that car. And it, he can wave his hands and say no. But really, at the end of the day, like for me, on, on our team, I'm the guy making that call. Mm. Um, 
And it's a tough call to make because you're just giving up time. Yeah. A thousand percent. But if you kind of have to check off on it and it's not over the line, you did give up some time, but it's yeah. risk versus reward. And there's also scenarios too where like- Where was he running when he came down? He, he in was the top in the five. top five all day. Yeah. So it's it's definitely tough, but it's a I mean it's it's not just the pickers' fault; it's a full team breakdown, right? The way that you fix that, you go to the root of the problem. You you don't stop hold, long. You don't stop. You don't stop over the line. Yeah. So yeah, yes, they service the car, but you go to the root of the problem. You don't stop over the line. So it's a full team. Um, yeah. Full team error. Man, threw it away. Yep. And then we go. Obviously, another big one was the seventeen. Seventeen lose a lug nut. Oh, and right they, front, huh? Yeah, that was tough early, and it, it hung on for, it hung on for a while until um, it didn't. Until it didn't, but that's the thing, man. Pit roads, that that's what happens if you don't get them tight. And and I had a couple yesterday that didn't want to run up, and mm. you know Vegas is the first real test, and we saw a lot of oh heaters boy. on pit road. Oh boy, there goes a wheel. Oh no, the seventeen car, kathunk. If you the if you hate to see it. There, there's a lot of speed in just going in and, and t- tapping that nut or tightening it, and it's a it's a game you play. It's a it's a risk you take. There it goes. They'll, you can even see slow motion the lug nut tink. I wonder if they knew it was loose or not because they this, were out there this for point, ten laps. At this point, I believe Chris realized it was loose. Well, right he, before uh, he made well, yeah. contact. Yeah, but I'm wondering if the guys in the pits knew it was. At the time where Fox broadcast shows seventeen in the fence, I think they're well. Oh, you're man. ten laps in at that point. Yeah. Right. And like, yeah, you feel like, you're like yeah, you already got your helmet off, tr- eating a p- peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Like, I I don't know if your wheel falls off like that, you don't have your helmet off because you are like, I'm not sure if that mm. thing's tighter. You know, and we all well, have high speed helmet cameras, so like, I wonder if they were like, ah, it's close. So let's just see, but. Like when you look at it, if they're looking at it today from a broad view, they're probably like, "Man, we probably should have pitted if we yeah. if we had a question." But it's it's early in the season; you're not really in your rhythm. You don't have a good feeling on what's tight and what's not. Like everybody, I don't know if the person watching the film was a new guy. You know, it's tough. So is that guy on a vacation now? Yeah, not yet because it's not Tuesday. But I'd say that Tuesday at four o'clock, maybe two weeks. Okay. Yeah, what is it, it, Jack? Man. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, two weeks. So. That's tough. That's a tough way, man. Mm. Vegas is always like our pit coach gets super emotional about like the West Coast swing because it's like the first real gauge. Um, and I think people coming out come out of Vegas and the the West Coast swing with like a with like a really like I've seen like some some like yeah we're good you know but like I always tell everybody some swag I always tell everybody yeah you don't really want to peak the third race of the season but there's only 33 left but it's good to gauge and you you know you want to be the best all year long what you don't want to happen is what happened in the 23 that's just a tough <sighs> it's a tough day they got a they got a lug nut caught on the left front it's easy to do especially when you gotta on get the, the carrier front. jumping on the torque wrench you're not having a good day which I don't know how they got there because I did see that they mm, had mm, I, I like you call it the Ugga Dugga 5000 yeah I like to call it Thor's hammer. That sucker right there. That's a gun that Paoli Paoli gives you. Um, it kind of looks for those of you just listening. It looks like a Gatlin gun. Um, you buy them from Paoli. What's the, you said you guys have a Milwaukee one. That one has. We got an electric one, yeah. That one it looks like a damn jackhammer. Yeah. But, um, what What's the the torque when you hit like what's a normal torque on a normal pit stop? Thousand pound. What's that? Ooh, it, see, like ours is. I don't know what that one is. But I'll say this: ours is like you can't put it in forward because yeah. if you tighten it with that, it ain't coming off. Yeah. So you take it. You know. What are they trying to cut it off with here? Probably a concrete saw. Yeah, a concrete saw. Because you cut it, and right when you cut it, it relieves uh-huh. the pressure. And pop, like pops open. Oh. But man, it was that the left front. So how we get here, right? Is the left front is kind of how you can make up time. You see a lot of the Hendrick cars, a lot of the teams that are, you know, kind of at the top end of this fast time list that we got going here. That's pretty high tech. That's a pretty high tech list you got there, buddy. It's nice. You spent some time on that thing. Well, we're stacking pennies still. We don't have any dollars. Uh, But when you, we we probably could have used all the pennies that you put on the floor over here. No. Put it towards the whiteboard. It looks better on the floor. But when you rip the jack, right, if the jack man puts the left rear on, and just turns and cuts the jack and trusts that the left front's going to be tight or at least get tight on the ground as it's leaving, S- there's a lot of time in that. So if you come back and you rush the trigger and the gun spins a little bit and the hang is flat, so the carrier must have had the hang flat and, and the front. What's the, that mean? 
like when you put the tire on, it's it's flat. It's the it's is flat, flat against the it's flat against the plate. Yes, okay. it's really good. Okay. So you want it flat, but when it's like that, and your gun is spooled up and it catches those threads, it'll almost pull the nut out of the gun and mm-hmm. like tighten it so hard and so fast that it just you're not able to get it back. You're not able to get the nut back off. It was perfect. And too perfect. It's too perfect. Yes, exactly the way to put it. And you kind of know when you do that, like, oh, this one could be tough. Um, and you got to go. I don't know what they did in that sequence of events watching the film, but you got to go right to Thor's hammer. The, you bring it out with you. You you go, hey man, set up Thor's hammer here. And like for me, I would just be like, plug it into the backup gun. Come around when I go to do the left sides. If it's not coming ready? off right away, you just grab that. <laughs> Um, cause you can't, how many the, times did that happen? The torque wrench is not gonna, how many times did that happen to me? Yeah. Once. Yeah. I, I was the first one that ever, well, I think I was the first or second because it was California. The second race of the season after one day, 2500 with Austin, uh, had one on the right front. We came in for the last stop and it just wouldn't come off. And I'm like, I remember like hitting the nut and be like, duh, 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 and I looked, I made eye contact with Bullens and I shook my head <laughs> like, no, ah, and what was crazy? I can't get it. What was crazy is the rear gun must have been more powerful. It was like the like I'm telling you, it was the second race, a one lug nut. So the guy from the rear came over and his gun took it off. We didn't have a way to take it off then. We didn't have the big gun, the new technology, the, the bazooka, Oga Duga five thousand. We didn't have that Thor's hammer. Uh, what'd you have this, this weekend? Thing. I see the twelve car keyed up. Did you have a little bit of an issue on pit road? What we happened? had. Did you we have just, a well? We we had a no. Zach, um, come around. And he'll slip in some gas here, but little half out of the right rear adjustment, tighten. Look at he's still tighten that boy up. He still crushes it. So that what happens what happened? there? What happened here? Uh, it pit, looks fine. Pit road super slick. Um, Chris unplugs Ooh. a little bit of fuel. All it takes. There's no Slippy. abrasive. There's no abrasiveness to this pit road at all. So any little bit of dust or fluid on the ground, you bust you, your ass. You get you a thousand percent. You'll bust your ass. So. What he does great there, though, is he a lot of times if you fall like that and hit the gun on the ground, it'll switch it from off to on, and then you'll go to hit the hub and your gun will be going the wrong way. So he pro he handled that. It looked like it didn't even slow stop down. He handled that like a pro. It was funny. It was like on the open mic when he fell. Like I'm standing here at the left front light, and I just hear him go. <laughs> I was like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> but uh, but yeah, we had a blue collar day. It wasn't blazing fast. We uh, had our we had our fastest stop of the day. Um, which was the last stop of the day, nine three, and hey, that leads us to, to the, the dogs. Dogs of the week. Who is it? New rule, new stack and pennies rule here in Nonsense Garage. If you set the fastest time of the year yeah. or the best average of the year, okay. you are the dog of the week instantly. So we have two this week, right but behind me. I thought there would only be one dog. No, not if you do it twice in the same week. But we're in the third week of the season, so we got to pick one. Uh, no, it's really the first pit crew week of the season. Okay. So um, that's fair. Hey man, my segment, my rules. We got two this week. All right, it's a lot of dogs. Mainly because the ones too many dogs in the hen house. One too many dogs in the dog house. (laughs) But it's okay because I like both these teams. Okay. Um, the eleven team sets the fastest stop of the year. They did it on the money stop, the last stop of the race. In eight eight eight. Come in eight eight eight. So they were, but they were second. That's scooting. They were second on the day on average Mm. to the twenty two team, who set the best average of the year. At a 9.45. So mm. both of those teams, uh, end of the year really strong, pick up the season, uh, pick up where they left off. Hendrick had a lot of speed. Your guys obviously had a lot of speed. A um, little bit of a couple woes that took you out. But I also have seen a lot of the Hendrick guys what going to the, Lug- the Ludwig jack-, jack Drop. Oh, yeah? They do the old backwards reverse Jack Drop. So He's the original Bulldog. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's but it's pretty cool. Check the tape on that. Yeah, but cool. shout out, shout out to the eleven and the twenty-two, uh, them dogs this week. Four tires and some Sunoco gas at eight seconds. Point eight eight is moving and grooving. Yeah, there was three eight-second stops this week, and there was ten stops uh, f- under nine one. So in the nine nine point zero range. So mm. yeah, definitely a lot of speed for the for the first real test for these teams this year. So. Uh, those are those are my thoughts. Let's go get some pennies for your thoughts. Let's do it. I like that. We're going to Phoenix this week, uh, but we got a couple of good penny for your thoughts questions. A couple yeah. of which I already answered earlier in the show. Yep, I got a couple just fired over here on Twitter. I'm gonna pull up right now. We're pull gonna them go, up. We're gonna go pull them live up. from Twitter. Hashtag penny for your thoughts. Fire them over on X every week. Oh, okay. Here's one right now. Tell James me. Greenlow. Do pit crews practice having to cut lug nuts off? It's not something you practice, but it's something you prepare for. 
That's a road crew thing, probably, right? Uh, it's a yeah, it's a everybody thing. It's just like a panic mode. Hey, at that point in time, it, your day's you, done. If you want it done fast, have the picker do it. If you want it done right, have the road crew do it. Also, that if you get the Ugga Dugga five thousand or the old cut off wheel for the lug nut, your day's pretty much done. Yeah, you're not recovering from that. Yeah. Um. Okay, here's one. Why okay. this is one comes from Captain Ron sixteen. He's got the pirates flag, so. I don't know, he's got black pearl on here. Why do drivers run the middle lane in the trial at Vegas on long runs? Wouldn't going down to the line wouldn't going down to the line be slightly faster? So he's wondering why you guys don't run the white line down the straightaway. Or a flat. Uh most of the time you're trying to get a little sniff of whoever's in front of you. So you're and just running wherever the guy in front of you is? Some of it is you don't want to put any more front scrub in your wheel. Uh, so if you are just turning your wheel more off the corner to try to get down there, you have to turn it more on entry of one, two. Um, so I think you're putting a little bit more scrub in your front tires as opposed to just kind of holding like a very minimal uh, wheel bend throughout the trialable. I think some of it's that. I think some of it's whoever, wherever you're, the guy in front of you is going. If that guy goes to the bottom, you're going to go to the bottom. But most of the time, it's kind of drug right around one lane off. Um, that kind of sets you up for turn one better and a, a better angle into the corner. So I never really thought about that. This kind of goes where the car wants to go, man. I got – here's one more um, from John Wilmeth. This is a decent one. During a, rec- during a race weekend with delays and et cetera, what are the guidelines for you being able to enjoy a cold beer or another adult beverage? Just curious after the Daytona schedule went to – he says it was a soup sandwich. But, yeah, with the rain delay because we've had we've had that conversation with our coaches before. About like, if you drink or not? Like, hey, guys, there's a two-beer minimum thing before race. Like, I, yeah, I'm i not a big drinker anyway. But. Yeah. I just I, – a couple of years ago, I just stopped drinking pretty much on the entire weekend. Yeah. Yeah, just make it a point. As soon as you fly out, if the wife's there, we might have, like – we might split a glass of wine or something. But other than that, no alcohol, no need for inflammation, lock in for business. Well, being hydrated is such an advantage mentally – too. Yeah, you don't. Um, for, yeah, you just think that if you're hydrated, you'll be you won't cramp up, right? But it's such a difference in your cognitive bunch, function over the course of the race. I'm not a guy that can um, drink and well, be good. I'm not. Yeah, you're old, bro. Well, I've just never been anybody that's good at drinking. But like, there are some picker guys that can like throw them back and just rip the next day like nothing ever happened. Uh, so those are some great penny for your thoughts questions. Keep firing those over. We got some good penny stackers. We had no less than ten people. Venmo me a penny, at least a penny. Some guy even fi- fired over five dollars. Whoa! Yeah, appreciate that. Five hundred pennies. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of pennies. Um, so yeah, you guys are the penny stack of the week. You guys made me laugh. Appreciate y'all listening. Uh, continue to show your support. Not only Venmo me a penny if you want to. You can. What actually would mean more to me if you would just follow us on wherever you follow your your podcast you would give us a five-star rating you would share us on your with your friends on social media you would follow us on at underscore stack and pennies on instagram to get the ice cold arctic trivia question uh that we're going to be giving out something every single week and also listen to sirius xm channel 90 as well We had a couple grind my gears, and you actually were a first-hand witness to what grind my gears this week, buddy. Well, it was so awkward. I was on the phone with you, yeah. You, yeah, you, you, you must have just landed or something, and you were hanging out at the South Point, and you called me. I was just leaving the Rabido's National Rugby League game. With, it was at Allegiant Stadium, the Roomba, as you call it. Uh, it looks like a Roomba, dude. Bro, I was on the field when them fellas came walking out of the tunnel, and there was some Samoan guys that looked like they were going to absolutely eat somebody's head off yeah Dude. i got scared Dude. for the other players yeah imagine having to go out there and literally just against them. knock heads every play um didn't really understand it but it was electric to watch <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't understand it no they just smash into each other and then every now and then they'll just kick it to the other to the other field i don't know and then they people get into I'm it. i'm not gonna tell next time svg's on here i'm not telling them that you're knocking rugby i'm not telling them that no, i think it's an electric sport don't know what the hell's going on, but we'll love a little it. barbaric. Me, like I was talking to some fella named Wade Graham. Guess who, he's a big deal in uh, the National Rugby League. 
back in the day. Nice. Uh, he was he. I only could make out about every third word that he says, but he kept saying footy, I'm playing footy. He they call it footy, not rugby. So it took took me a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, that's why I said in my post, big footy guys. Apparently that's what they call rugby. Uh, but on the way back, anyways, on the way back, I get an Uber. Uh, nice fella in a Tesla. I'm in the back, and it's like a five-minute ride back to the hotel. And I've got my legs crossed. I'm in the right rear seat, and I've got my toe. Like, he's got the the passenger, like the, the front row passenger seat, like as far back as you can go. Not considerate. Already one-star doc. Uber etiquette. So I'm... Like, my knee is on the back of the seat. My toe is in between the seat and the door, right? So he can, if he peeks over, he sees my toe, my size 11 foot toe, like, sticking out behind, like, okay. yeah. next to the door. And he says, sir, don't put your foot on my car. You heard all this. And you go, it's not up there. Look at it. I you said, argue I'm with not, him. Yeah, I said, I'm not touching your seat, dude. I'm not getting your seat dirty. And we argued for like three minutes. I, I was said, in the middle of the argument. I said, hey, sir, look at my foot right now. Look at it. Is it touching anything? Is it, foot, is it touching anything? Uh, 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 no. And it was just pin drop quiet. I said, Ryan, I got to go. I got to handle this. No, thing. I was awkwardly like, uh, man, uh, call me later. Yeah, I got a situation so there. This fellow's you. about to get a zero star rating. Kidding me? You saw, yeah, but they can give you a rating too. So I got, I had a heater of an Uber rating weekend going. I had three five star reviews up until this fella. So okay, so I I believe it's a wash. Would you rather I gave him a zero, I gave him a zero star, and he gave me a zero star, and we agreed to disagree. Would you rather? No, I remember rubbing I, my got, feet I, on his Tesla. I would. I've got a good one. Would you rather get yelled at by some guy driving a Tesla, or? Pay two hundred and fifty bucks for when you get a bike ride back to your hotel in Chicago. <laughs> that two hundred and fifty dollar what do they even call those things? Pedicabs? Was much more of an enjoyable experience than I had in that Tesla. It was a nice experience till you got the bill. Even so. We didn't yeah. argue about putting my feet on something that wasn't even my feet on. So I, you, really, I, look, if I'm riding my bike a block and you're paying me two hundred and fifty bucks, you can put your foot wherever <laughs> you want. Uh yeah. So it was worth it. That was a great pedicab ride. Don't recommend it if you you know, any other means of transportation would be highly more cheap than that. But yes, I would rather, I'd rather ride in that fetty, fellow's petty car again and okay. pay two hundred fifty dollars than ride with that fellow. It was that. so awkward on the phone. I texted you like later. I'm like, you're, I was. I, I was didn't know if those. you were in a back alley. Like the guy was like, "All right, I'm beating this guy with my stick here." I was like, like taking a back look. I was like, "What? What is this fellow talking about? I'm my foot is not making contact with anything in this vehicle." <laughs> Uh, so once I realized he was actually fired up, I was like, no, no, sir. I'm fired up. Wow. Um, what ground your gears this week? I'm good. I got no ground gears. I'm. What'd you think about, uh, I, I'll tell you uh, one thing that does grind think, my gears. Brandon gone. Please let stop letting people smoke cigarettes in the South point. They would have to knock that place down to the ground and rebuild a new one. If they want to get the smoke. I, I love everything. The cigarette smoke is just enough for me to just not want to go back. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, what'd you think about a little bit, a uh, little bit of Denny Hamlin's comments this week on the podcast? I, I, Peeing in his car. Yeah, I got a little graphic. His interior guy. Got a little graphic. Ah, uh, so like what I know about people peeing in their car because it doesn't happen as much as you think. <clears throat> it happens more at the speedways because you don't sweat. Because you don't sweat and you're and you're sitting there under red for a while. Yeah, it's. I uh, haven't had to pee more in my car than I had to at, at Atlanta last week. It's. It's gross. Like it, like it's what gross. it does to the paint, and it sits in there, and like it's gross. Like I guess if you're gonna if you're gonna piss the seat, like dump the water on there and dump it around and try to get it out of there. But like, well, here, man, here you, was, I had a, I had so I had I ran through all the options under that red flag at Atlanta. Did you pee? No. Okay. That was an option on the table though. So I it's I, always I, an option. I had to go. I had to go so bad. I I thought if I get tangled up at the end of this race, my bladder's gonna explode and I'm gonna be septic and I'm gonna die. But I'm willing to take that risk before I pee in the seat. Yeah. So who's your interior guy? You don't really have one. Okay. Uh, it's just kind of everybody pitches in and just helps me hook my stuff. So up instead of pissing one guy off, you piss everybody off. Yeah. It's a good move not to literally <laughs> pissing everybody off. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, okay, what are my options? Go. Mm, let's put that at the bottom list for now. Shelf that. I have to really go. Um, do I hold it? Mm, option number. No, option C. I have an empty water bottle. 
let me go ahead and just you know knock the top off of this thing and see if we can do it. So I start un- I start loosening my belts up, and I get the lap belt loose, and I'm like, you got shitting. an in car camera. I'm loosening my stuff up. I'm like situating. There's all there's there's two zippers on a fire suit. There's one on top. There's one on bottom. You can do the math of which was what allows you to do what. So I'm like shimmying around, and I like in the sub straps. I'm like trying to get some slack, and I look up, and there's the little in car camera because I never have one. I'm like, oh no. Yes. I don't want Clint to be comparing notes. <laughs> so I just I went back to reverted to option B, which was just hold it. Say, hey man, I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> Yeah, um, so that's what I did. I I audibled because I was fully committed to just filling up a water bottle and tossing it out. But once I realized that I had a Chili's in car camera, I uh, I scrapped that plane. Thought that web glove was something to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Golly, yeah. Oh man, talk about interior guys. Uh, it was cool to see Larson's kids in the right side of that car this weekend. Oh my goodness, uh, one one of those things that make made your heart. Uh, feel warm and fuzzy. Owen running run around. What a cool thing to experience with your with your kid, man. This kid's been to Knoxville Nationals, Victory Lane. He's been to, he's well, he's been on top of some cool race cars at some cool race tracks. He he did happen to hit the the Great Race Car Dad Award uh, lottery. Uh, so congrats to Owen. His dad's really really good at his job. Uh, Audrey running out. It's just man, what a cool experience to uh, to share. Just them two too. Like hey, go run out there and see Pop. I'll uh, tell you this: If those kids touched anything inside that car they weren't supposed to, Cliff Daniels will yell at them. Yeah. Hey, hey, watch the window. This is not going to pass my post race inspection. Kyle, Owen oh, scratched the window this weekend. We have to talk about what we're going to do next time. I need to put a whole new right side corner uh, window in this thing. It's unacceptable. Oh man. But pretty cool ride. That's Owen awesome. two handed holding that checkered flag. Yo, that checkered flag to hold is no joke. Yeah, he's got some muscles. Like well, he, you know, if Owen's if Owen's holding the checkered flag for every one of his dad's wins, he's working up some pretty good muscles. Yeah. Uh, I talked to to Larson briefly on the way to driver intros about Phoenix. He said that was pretty fun. Oh, uh, the running Indy, Indy car, car Phoenix. I heard yeah. he had a moment. They said he said it actually drove like comparable to a Cup car. Just I don't know, probably ten seconds faster. Uh, so my. My excitement was already high to watch that fellow in the Indy 500 doing the double, uh, but it is. I don't know if I've been more excited to watch something in motorsports in there, a long time. There was a clip of Kimi Räikkönen talking about Cup racing this week too. That was really good. He was <clears throat> giving it props and he was comparing how F1 has to use DRS and kind of more naturally in IndyCar. I have to go back and watch it, but yeah, mm. dude, NASCAR racing is good. The racing product is just you can't be beat. It's good. NASCAR racing product continues to deliver each and every week, and it's going to deliver at Phoenix this weekend. True test. Obviously, we wrap up the season finale. Is that Phoenix? So you want to make sure your stuff's pretty good. New diffuser. Simple diffuser. Simple. Uh, not complex. It's just simple. How's it going? To, what's it going to do for the racing? It's going to allow the cars to be a little more hung out. Um, it uh, allows you to put a little more yaw on the car without instantly breaking traction. Uh, so it keeps some rear downforce in it. The more sideways is the racing going to be better. I think it. I think it will. Uh, when we tested the simple diffuser and the tires with the thicker gauge rubber that we're going with, the track got really wide. Give you a lot of options. Uh, you moved all around, and you can slide the car. You can burn the right rear tire off if you wanted to. So I think it's going to be one of the better Phoenix races that we have seen with the next gen car. tire fall off. Uh, three quarters of a second over Ooh, thirty. So you'd be putting some tires on that thing i think you'll be putting tires let's on. go um yeah so that's what we got that's all i got that's it yeah i'm gonna catch up this week you guys make sure you tune in to everything on social media but also uh we continue to have stuff sweet arctic gear to give away on our social at underscore second pennies and we appreciate you guys we i don't know what do you think i think that uh we're done i think we're done uh that's all i got whether you're listening on SiriusXM Channel 90, we appreciate you each and every week for stacking pennies with us. Goodbye.